What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Shanita C., the beauty influencer, and I'm back. I know it's been a while. Don't judge me. Just hear me out. First of all, thank you all so much for tuning back into my channel, to my old subbies. And for my new subbies, thank you all so much for checking me out. As always, you all could have been on any other YouTuber's channel, but here you are with me. And for that, I do thank you. So... For this video, I wanted to ease my way back into filming as I am still trying to figure out this whole YouTube algorithm. I'm trying to figure myself out. I'm trying to figure out the purpose of me doing this. And I think I have finally determined what it, what it is that I'm trying to do with this channel. So as you guys can see by the screen, there are some pictures of me as a little girl. So in today's video, I want to focus on that little girl or that little boy that resides in the adult version of you. So if you guys are interested to hear what I have to say and my thoughts and perspective on this, then stay tuned. And yeah, let's jump into this video. So, that little girl in me, that little girl, and that teenage girl right there, wow. I never knew how broken the younger version of myself was until recently. So today, I decided to wake up, and as I was taking a shower, I don't know why it came to me, but... I was like, you know what? All of this time I had been pointing fingers at everyone else, you know, thinking that why is it that I am being subjected to what I'm being subjected to when it comes to people, circumstances or situations? And I don't know, today I just realized that it's me. And what I mean by that is I have not healed that little broken girl that's in me so i'm a teenager on this picture i was 13 years old i remember this picture but i also remember growing up constantly being told that i'm this way oh you're disrespectful you're this you know the negative adjectives that you know people may use to describe you and you know i don't know i guess it kind of affected me but here's what i'm trying to say so as I am talking about this, I'm going to show you guys the present me, you know, me doing my makeup application because I was like, you know what? I want to kill two birds with one stone. I want to be able to talk to you guys about what I've been thinking about as well as still giving you guys some some good content and not any boring content. So in this next scene, you guys are going to see me doing my makeup application. So I hope you enjoy this next scene. So as I stated as I was in the shower today, it was like God spoke to me. And it took me back to my childhood, which is why I inserted those younger pictures of me. And I guess I have not healed or I have not allowed that little girl that resides in me still to heal so that I can fully embrace the grown woman that I am today. So I actually spoke to my mom when I was telling her this. I was like, you know, mama, growing up, you know, I, I had a lot of accomplishments and accolades and ceremonies, like reward ceremonies that you have when you're in elementary school or even middle school for that matter, in high school. And I remember, you know, me and my brother, we would, you know, walk to school together. And I remember we would kind of cheer each other on when we would have our, our reward ceremonies. And it was just me and him, you know, cheering each other on. 
And I remember looking around as I'm on stage getting rewarded and I would see the other kids with their parents, their loved ones, you know, they're cheering them on, clapping for them. And then I would look at me and my brother and it was just us, you know? And so I didn't understand that then, but now as an adult, I see that subconsciously I am still affected by that. So much so that fast forward to my adult life, I am still holding on to that little girl part of me that was not praised for my accolades. Now, when I say praise, I'm not saying that I'm I'm wanting people to just bow down to me. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But what I'm saying is, you know, now as an adult, when you accomplish things out here, no matter how big or small, you look for that support from your family you know that emotional support or you know it kind of gives you reassurance that you're on the right track and that you're doing the right thing and that you are you know one step closer to being successful is what i'm trying to say and so i would have to say that literally starting from 2021 that is when i decided to pretty much move out on my own I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I was it was at the age of 31 where I decided to finally just be all the way independent with, you know, staying on my own, getting my own everything. And so um, from that time forward, I, I moved into I moved from my mom's house to my apartment then. And then from my apartment, I ended up buying a house. And throughout that process, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, you know, with me, with family, friends, things of that nature. And um, I don't know, I just kind of felt like I wasn't getting that support that I would have liked from people outside of myself. And I thought that I had let that go. But obviously, like I said, as of today, I had to realize that I'm pointing fingers at people when I should be pointing fingers at myself because I am in control of my own emotions and how I feel and how I write this new book or this new chapter of my life. I can't blame mom and dad anymore. I can't blame anyone else, no friends or any of that. I only can blame myself or I don't even want to say blame, but I cannot hold anyone else accountable for my peace of mind, my healing, my happiness, but myself. And that's a hard pill to swallow. And so it came to me today, and this is my second time re-recording this audio because the first audio that I did, I was like, no, that's not the right message that I want to send out there. So I'm doing it different. And it's me being transparent with you all as well. And so back to the accolades. Uh, buying my house, I've mentioned this before that I felt like I didn't get the support that I would have liked because it was a it's an easy process to buy a house as far as, you know, having, you know, your team, you know, your realtor, things of that nature. That part is easy. But the behind the scenes with having that support, that's the part that I felt was a little bit overwhelming for me. And I remember there were people in my life you know, that I kind of got a little upset and aggravated. And I was, I would even say disappointed with, because I felt like they weren't there every step of the way. And so today, it literally took me to today, you know, to realize that it wasn't them that I was upset at. I guess I was still holding on to my parents not being there, you know, during my moments of accolades or achievement when I was that little girl. And so in turn, I had been taking it out on other people. And I had to realize that. It's like God just, he, he kind of spoke that to me as I was in the shower today. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that. And so I was like, let's talk about that inner child that resides in us that is still broken. And I feel like it has affected a lot of the relationships that I have developed now and i'm not talking about just romantically i'm talking about even with friendships even with co-workers you know when we 
get agitated, frustrated, or upset at other people because of their words, their choice of words, their actions, sometimes it, it, it's a reminder of something that we haven't healed from, you know, as a child, you know, and I had to realize that I still have a lot of healing to, to do. And I want to heal. I want to put that little girl to rest so that I can, again, embrace my womanhood fully without having to go back to that little girl. It's almost like throwing a tantrum. When things don't go my way as far as the way someone should react to something that I may say or do, it's like I go back to that little girl, that broken little girl, and it makes me react in a certain way to where I want to ignore people, distance myself, things like that. That's what I find myself doing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to talk about something else, too, as far as the distancing thing. But right now, I just wanted to acknowledge that, you know, we may have some healing to do from our childhood that could be affecting the life that we have now as an adult. A lot of people are not going to understand this or even agree with me, and that's okay. But for me, I think I finally got my revelation today. And I was like, okay, God, I hear you. You're right. I need to heal Nini. Okay, that's, Nini is the little girl. I need to heal her so that I can fully embrace Shanita, which is the adult version of myself. Now that I have admitted that I see the world differently now, I see my relationships that I have with people differently now. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm just completely healed. But now that I know that I cannot look outside of myself or I cannot blame anyone else for, you know, that little brokenness that resides in me because of that little girl. I now know that I have to take full accountability and do what I need to do and heal from that. So, yes. Now, let's talk about the distance. So, even though I have been absent with uploading videos on YouTube, I have still been faithfully, faithfully looking at other YouTubers' channel. I like to listen to like podcasts or videos where people just talk about all sorts of things and this is one channel that i just love i've been listening to it for years watching the videos and i literally watch his channel every single day because it blows my mind with how how he talks about certain stuff like it's far some of it can be far-fetched but it's okay i'm one of those people where i like to hear other people's thoughts and perspectives on things and so with his channel i'm able to do that and hear that even while i'm working both of my jobs and i love that so the video that stood stood out to me um on his channel is one of the videos where he talks about how if a person is walking away or walking out of your life you actually should embrace them walking away. And I know that is a crazy concept, but I understood what he was saying because I am one of those people where I don't really like begging people to just stay in my life. Now, there was a time before, I want to say in my 20s, where whenever I ended a relationship or, you know, it was a mutual thing, I had a problem with letting it go. But over time, because it had happened so many times, I was like, you know what? I'm not finna let, I'm not finna beg anyone to stay in my life and experience Shanita. I'm not gonna do that. So in my 30s, it's just amazing how, you know, your teens, they teach you things as far as like in your teenage years. Your 20s, they teach you things as well. And I feel like when you are when you get in your 30s, everything that you've experienced in your teenage years and in your 20s, you kind of mature from that in your 30s. And that's what I'm learning. I really wish 
all of the stuff that I know right now that I, I wish I would have known it or embraced it when I was in my 20s. Things will be a lot different, but it's okay. Um, I'm making the changes that I need to make now. But back to the video. So his video was pretty much insinuating that if a person is walking out of your life or a situation has walked out of your life, like embrace that and thank them for doing that because essentially it is opening doors for what you ask God for. And I like to look at it as placing an order. A lot of you probably do a lot of online shopping or even when you place an order for food online and then you go to pick it up or you have it shipped to your home or delivered to your home. This is the example that I like to use. So it doesn't matter when you ask God for whatever you've asked him for. It could be something that you may have asked him for 20, 30 years ago, you know, or all the way up until now, the present time. And think about it, even when you was a little kid, you would ask God for things. And so it's amazing because when you ask God for stuff, he's working behind the scene to get you whatever you ask for. But unfortunately, we are on his timing because only he knows when it's best for us to receive whatever it is that he, you know, we have asked him for. So sometimes when situations arise, where you may fall out with a person, you may have noticed that things are not going good at your job because it's time for you to kind of move on from that. And the reason that, you know, God makes us uncomfortable in certain situations or even with people is because that is his way of preparing you or getting ready to give you what you asked him for recently or years ago. Isn't that something? So, when it happens, whether it's a job that you did not get, whether it's a job that you had got laid off of, it doesn't matter whether it was a relationship that just broke you to the core when the person just said, oh, you know, I don't want to be with you anymore. Whether you caught your mate cheating, you know, coming home from a hard day of work and you walk in to your house and you see that your husband or whoever is laid up with someone or whatever, I know that in that moment in time, it may be hard for you to see like, hey, you had to see this or experience this in preparation for what I have for you. But over time, you will see why things happened the way that they did. And it's only because now in order for someone to embrace and experience your purpose, then they have to be out of your life, that particular person, and allow room for the people that are meant to be in your life, if that makes sense. I hope I said that right. I'm going to try to say it again. So if people are walking away from you, actually embrace that because they have served their purpose with you or even you've served the purpose for them. I don't know. And now it's time to move on so that you can be one step closer to the purpose that God has for you. And so certain people are not meant to be in your life during the time that you have finally acknowledged and have discovered your purpose for being here on this earth. And so he will allow us to be uncomfortable in certain situations, be it a friendship, a romantic relationship, tension with the family, a job, whatever. And it's because he's trying to, God is trying to, you know, force you to let it go so that you can go ahead and get this new gift that he has for you that you asked him for whether it was recently or if it was something that you asked him for 10 20 years ago that you may have forgotten about but god has not forgotten obviously once you place an order with god that's it all you have to do is place your order with him and then you let him work on it behind the scenes with shipping it to you but you're only going to receive the shipment after certain people are out of your life because again everyone is not meant to experience or take part in the shipment or the order that you place with god does that make sense because it definitely makes sense for me and so in this gentleman's video that's what he that's what he was pretty much insinuating that you know it's okay to let people walk away from you that's okay 
And it's also okay for you to distance yourself and set boundaries for yourself. I know people that personally get upset when you set a boundary for yourself. The boundary is not in place for that person. So I'm not really sure why that person gets upset when you set boundaries. It's for yourself. It's for you because that is you putting yourself first. That is you indulging in self-care. And that's okay. You don't have to explain to people why you're not picking up the phone no more. You don't have to explain to people why you guys don't hang out anymore, go out anymore, do the things that you was doing years ago. It is okay. In the world that we live in right now, the only thing that's, you know, fulfilling out here now is just to embrace yourself focus on your own peace because the world is steadily involved evolving and changing some for good and some for bad but you need your sanity and your peace and i don't have to explain to people why i am now moving in a whole nother direction and this bring, brings me to something else that i had seen on social media like it was this quote or should i say this ma'am that was out there where it pretty much said that you are the ceo of the people in your life so that means that you need to demote accordingly if you need to you need to promote people if you need to do you do the hiring and firing of your life because people move differently just like change is you know unavoidable people change too and it could be because they're going through their own thing so when people start changing or switching up on you it's okay to you know demote them or promote them or what have you hire them fire them accordingly it's okay to do that sure they may get offended by it but at the end of the day you're doing this for yourself this is not about anyone else. You are doing this completely for yourself and you do not owe anyone an explanation as to why you no longer, you know, I don't know, spend as much time with them or do the things that you used to do because maybe I'm doing this or I'm moving this way because, hey, I notice a change in you and then vice versa. And I don't know why people get so offended when you start switching up or changing. I mean, again, a lot of times people be thinking it's, it's, them, that, it's, it's them that has done something wrong. But a lot of times it's not even about that. It's about you. You know, you're trying to get to another phase of your life. And so I find that when you are by yourself, that is the most time that you become creative. At least for me, that's how it works. Now, I've had people, you know, kind of like make jokes. Oh, you know, that's why you don't have any friends, you know, this and the other. You know what? It's hurtful to hear stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I don't have to explain to you why I like a very small circle, if any. But just know that during my time of loneliness, you know, first of all, it's by choice. And then second of all, that is when I begin to experience, you know, creativity the most. I mean, I'm just being honest, like you should, it takes a very confident person to really enjoy their own presence, their own company, because you know what, once you're able to embrace and enjoy your own self, your own company, your own presence, then when it, when it's time for you to network and meet other people or even dating, you know, you'll be able to embrace that as well. But there is nothing wrong with practicing safe, you know, um, self-care. I'm sorry, self-care. There's nothing wrong with that. So do not let society tell you that there is something wrong with self-care. We all need that. And I think that's what's going on now is that we're not taking that time for ourselves to even learn ourselves. And broken people you know, they're still broken. And with them being broken, they're steadily getting in relationships and stuff. And now they're carrying baggage from their childhood, bringing it right into the present and it's creating even more problems. So this goes back to what I said initially in this video with healing that inner kid that resides in you when people may do certain things or say certain things that may offend you and it's usually because you haven't healed from that kid in you and it could be because of how you were raised maybe mama didn't do something maybe daddy didn't do this or daddy did that you know vice versa 
And that's something that you have to work on. Other people are not responsible for your healing. Only you are responsible for your healing. And I know it's easier said than done. Now, I will say that, you know, people are placed in your life for certain reasons. And I do feel like during your happy moments, if you have someone there for you that can share those moments with you, you got that girlfriend that you can call on to gossip, you know, do this or do that, gossip about or whatever. But then when you're in your darkest moments, they are they are nowhere to be found. That is an issue. And I recently had, you know, someone that kind of shared with me that they talked to a professional that was pretty much letting them know, like, you can't really get upset at those friends that are not there, you know, during those moments, your dark moments. And I really didn't agree with that because it's like, wait a minute, did I hear that right? I don't understand what professional will be telling someone that it that you know it's okay for your friends not to be there during that time but i don't really agree with that because if i can laugh and kiki with you you know about silly stupid stuff and you're there for me with that you mean to tell me when i'm going through my darkest moments and i'm talking about you know real dark moments like grieving over someone you mean to tell me that they can't be there for that that is crazy help me understand why a professional would even tell a client that your friends and family are not responsible i mean i can kind of get what she's saying this person but i don't necessarily agree with it and i'm not saying that you you know that i'm that i'm just trying to dump my load on you so think of it as this right here if there's a heavy box that needs to be lifted up and you know transported to somewhere else i can't do that by myself if it's extremely heavy so if i ask one of my friends to you know hey can you help me lift this box up and move it you know to x y and z there is nothing wrong with that right so why is it that we can accept that example of you know okay you need help lifting up a box i got you i'll help you but you mean to tell me that i can't get that same help when i'm going through my darkest moments i have to do that all by myself because you know hey the person may not know how to respond to your your sadness you know or even your depression when you're going through you know the ups and downs of whatever you're going through in your darkest moments but i understand because at the end of the day you guys we are responsible for our own emotions we literally get to choose if we want to wake up happy if we want to wake up angry if we want to wake up sad all of that good stuff in between that part i'm not disputing because that is so true but i'm talking about you know having that support system when you are going through dark moments life is not always about everything being all hunky-dory like you're going to have some very challenging moments and if i'm able to have my girlfriends there with me during my happy moments why they can't be there during my sad moments that's a good question and I get it, you know, people are, we're always going through things. You know, I love to throw out there that, you know, in this life, people are entering a storm, they're going through a storm, or they are getting out of a storm and getting ready to repeat the same cycle over and over again. So it's like, essentially, you never really have time to just, who you know, sigh and just be relaxed, you know? And I guess that is what makes humans you know react the way that we react towards one another and it's because we're all i like to call it survival mode we're all in survival mode where we're trying to constantly work on ourselves and we really don't be having time for other people and i'm trying to have understanding with that i'm really am because i get it you know everybody is going through stuff but i feel like you know, if I'm able to still, with everything that I'm carrying, and I'm carrying a big load, if I'm able to still carry my load and sit it down just a little bit just to, to kind of check on you, I 
kind of want the same thing in return but that goes back to the e-word expectations so when you set expectations or you put expectations on people or situations you're essentially setting yourself up for heartache or disappointment because everyone is not going to follow the original plan and that's okay and that's why i said this next phase of my life i'm gonna i'm gonna be by myself but this time it's gonna be more of a choice rather than a force i'm gonna choose to be by myself because number one i want to work on healing completely i don't want to keep sweeping up sweeping um my healing up under the rug or lack thereof should i say i want to go ahead and truly heal from nini so that i can fully you know live into shanita and embrace shanita wholeheartedly and i feel like so many doors were open for me and another thing that i've been sitting back and working on is oh my god my finances man i was telling my mama today i was like girl I'm very financial irresponsible and you know I feel like a lot of people we're always looking for the next best job or something like that something that's paying more than what you're getting paid right now because you know bills and stuff is piling up the cost of living now the cost of living is at an all-time high but um literally a few days ago I had took some time out to write out my finances and there is an area of my finances that I am ashamed of and I ain't it ain't no food okay so don't don't get any ideas <laughs> but I was like girl how in the world are you able to kick out $930 a month on this particular area of your finances that is insane but even though it was hard to look at that area of my life financially I have that also gave me it gave me an idea so what i did i wrote down a um short-term goal so within the next six months i'm trying to save x amount of dollars and i'm trying to pay down this bill and cut it down tremendously to maybe like a more manageable amount which is about 350 dollars you know so going from 9 30 a month to about um 345 dollars i think that'll make a big difference in my pockets honestly and my pockets will appreciate it but you know even though it was hard to see what you know where was all my money going i was like you know it's hard seeing this picture but it's teaching me something it's teaching me to be more responsible when it comes to my spending and my money because anytime that you are spending out more money than you're bringing in that is a problem like that's a big problem and i literally had to take accountability and you know know that it's me that's doing that so i don't have to be out here working three four five jobs all i have to do now is just cut down on some stuff so anyway i just wanted to throw this out there so that you guys can you know hear and see what's been going on in my life i do want to pick this back up with you guys you know so i hope you guys enjoyed the remainder of this video and i do hope that i have left some gems for you guys and that i had you know spoke to someone because you guys may be going through the same things that i've been going through and understand that even though i have been absent from uploading videos on youtube i have still been here on youtube listening and looking at other youtubers because i just wanted to really do things a little bit different on my channel with doing mostly voiceovers while still showing you guys some good engaging content so with that being said thank you guys for tuning back in and enjoy the remainder of this video until next time i'm changing who i am i'm making a new plan rearranging my life and I won't look back ever again yeah. If you ain't see me activated You better hope that you never see me agitated I think about my actions, plan them out, evaluated That's how I end up on the top, man, I'm calculated My mind's a weapon, my body is the engine I'm never second guessing, I just do what I was destined Cause I feel I got the blessing, persistence and obsession That's how you keep progressing, I already learned that lesson, yeah I'm changing
I won't look back ever again yeah. hey, You ain't see me activated You better hope that you never see me agitated I think about my actions, plan I'm not evaluated That's how I end up on the top, man, I'm calculated My mind's a weapon, my body is the engine I'm never second guessing, I just do what I was destined Cause I feel I got the blessing, persistence and obsession That's how you keep progressing, I already learned that lesson, yeah Don't change it Go. No fear, see clear, you deserve to be 